Hey, what's up everyone? I am Sportsu and I'm here today with a brand new video. This time a brand new ant care species guide. And today we're going to be talking about a species of whose genus I have yet to talk about on the channel. I mean, I've talked about it, but I've never done an ant care species guide on any ant species of this genus, okay? The species we're going to be talking about today, in case you haven't read the title or the thumbnail, is Phaidolinoda, also known as Phaidolinodus, or Phaidoli rombinoda, which is very hard to say and very seldomly used. So Phaidolinoda or Phaidolinodus will be the most, uh, the most available, the most commonly said names, okay? They are Phaidoli and as that, their common name is big-headed ants because they've got a very big polymorphism in their castes of uh, workers. I'll get to that in a second. First of all, let's discuss a little bit of the environment in which these ants live, and that environment is what you need to replicate in the ant setup to have these ants live and thrive. So, they exist in the southern, southern part of Asia, more to the east of the South Asia, and uh, they exist primarily in Japan, Vietnam, India, and Sri Lanka, okay? Now in these countries, they are they exist more prominently, they do exist in other countries of the Southeast Asia, and they are extremely prominent in South Japan, that's where they're most common, okay? Now, being in this sort of tropical area, they do have some requirements towards uh, climate, which are, which are a little bit more specific than temperate species, um, but they're they're perfectly normal and overall a little bit more tolerant to variations in these in both humidity and temperature when compared to other tropical species they're actually pretty good at dealing with such variations now they live primarily in open grasslands and open forests so they are sort of a field ant which means that they'll be very active in the outworld. Normally an ant that lives in this sort of a of an environment, this sort of biome, they'll be very active in the outworld and, and they are and they do move around in rural trails and it's it's very fun to watch them. The 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 numbers that you'll need to know to take care of this ant species are uh, that they in when it comes to humidity they need to have the outworld above 50%. The nest should be a little bit more humid, but should not be damp. They cannot uh, withstand uh, humidities above 80%. I mean, they can withstand them, but they cannot thrive and withstand them for uh, extended periods of time. So, any way you go about it, you must keep somewhere a little bit or not above the 50% humidity to the air around their setup, and you must keep the nest a little bit more humid and you must give them a gradient of both temperature and humidity to make sure that they thrive the best they can, the best they possibly can, okay? So when it comes to, to temperature, they can actually stand anywhere from 21 to 30 degrees Celsius and that being the range to where they can live, they thrive at, the, at, at between 24 and 28 degrees Celsius, which is where most ants tend to thrive, you know, most of them can handle uh, either a lot more, a lot less, or not a lot of differences from this 24 to 28, but 24 to 28 is, as a general rule, the best uh, threshold for temperature for ant species in general. And in the case of Phaidolinodus, that is exactly where they thrive. So if you can give them those sorts of temperatures, they'll be fine They'll be fine all year round. They do not need any hibernation because they're tropical. They don't need no estivation or nothing. They'll be active 24-7, 365 days a year. So they'll be an awesome pet to have if you have, uh, if you can give them this sort of a climate. Okay, they are extremely easy when it comes to everything else, and I'll explain why in a bit. Climate is not something that's very difficult. Most Tropical species, as I've explained, are a lot harder to make sure that they're okay. So, 
let's now get on to food okay the nutrition of these ants consists of essentially insects and sweets they eat a lot of meat and they are a sort of a praying ant they hunt down insects they form little trails and the workers just swarm everything that they find they are sort of a very very miniature in colony size at least Carabara diverse or Carabara finis. They they just swarm everything that they see, and they do that in the in the setup in your setup when you keep them. So it's very very interesting to watch them hunt or at least take in food that you give them. They can also eat seeds, which is amazing because seeds is something that is always very easy for us to find and to give them, and uh, it's something that it's no processing and. No one is afraid or disgusted by seeds, well, whereas a lot of people don't really like to have to feed insects to their pets. Now, they cannot at all live only off of seeds, but giving them the proper uh, diversity and amounts of seeds, you can drastically reduce the amount of insects and sugars that you need to give them. But you must keep in mind that you will never be sure on how well you're feeding them if you're feeding them with only seeds. So if I kept one a colony of these, which I actually do at the moment, I would not feed them solely seeds. I'll give them some seeds because if they feel the need to complement their diet with that, they can. I give them the options and they choose. That's the key core of ant keeping is making choices available for your ants and they choose for themselves. That's the same principle behind the whole um, gradient in temperature and humidity that I've explained in a video on my channel, which you should probably watch if you're into ant keeping and do not know the the why and how to create temperatures and and humidities that are proper for your ants without you know extremely complex readings and even with that they change preferences and they need different stuff but I go over all of that in that video so I'll leave it there if I can if I can't then go to my channel thank you and um, now now nutrition it's very important to keep them fed because Fidoli in general uh, do not keep a lot of food stored in their bodies it, the, the, the soldiers can be used a sort of mini replete where they'll they'll um, they'll enlarge their gasters and they'll keep food stored inside of their social stomachs for a while but they're not really great at it so they'll they'll eat eagerly like once a day and they can go a lot of time without eating like a week or something without having a very uh, very dangerous problems with brood production but after a week you have to feed them and they'll be extremely happy and much better off if you feed them regularly because in contrast to many other ant species Fidoli does need to eat um, a lot more constantly than what other ants usually need that might be a bad thing that may be a good thing because it means that you get to see them hunt and swarm food more often okay now let's get to sizes the workers are generally a little bit above three millimeters, which is medium to big in the general in the, the, the genus. Okay, Fidoli doesn't get very large in their worker size. They do get large or larger in the soldiers. The soldiers of this cast of this species are all above the five millimeters. Some of them get closer to seven, and they have a little bit of a difference between them. Some are a little bit smaller, some are a little bit bigger, but you can't really tell. What you can tell is the difference between the worker and the soldier. They they have not only the difference in size, they have a very big difference in body structure. The so the major is a lot more bulky and has an, a, a very much enlarged head in comparison to the rest of the body proportions. Um, the queen is around 10 millimeters or something uh, like about a centimeter. She's a little bit bigger than the bigger majors that there are and you can easily distinguish her from the rest because she has the bigger gaster and the bigger thorax where there where the the wings used to be okay now in uh, in also in contrast to many phytoli species 
this species, Phylloinata, is monogenous. They can only have a single queen. So if you see somewhere online where they sell Phylloinatas or Nada with more than one queen, it can happen in the wild, don't get me wrong, and you, you could possibly have a colony with more than one queen, but it's rare. Most of the times they kill each other or they wait until they have workers and then the workers kill one of the queens and the, the eggs and the workers of that queen, okay? So keep that in mind if you're buying them. If you found a colony that you're certain is Phytoinoda and has more than one queen in the wild, it does happen. It does happen. It happens, in fact, uh, with any ant species in some particular situations which are not very easy to explain because science doesn't really understand it. Okay? So, I'm, I'm going on about this of the queens because of my next little point, which is the size of colony. Most Fidoli colonies will get around the 5,000 with a single queen, and with multiple queens they can easily sustain more than 10,000, which do not occupy a lot of space, because the workers are very small, the eggs are very small, they can compact themselves very well. They're not a space-problematic ant species. And they do grow very fast. And finally, not that does grow fast as well, but they can only reach somewhere around 3,000. And even the cases documented that have more than one queen, they do not exceed the 3,000. There's some sort of evolutionary advantage for them to keep themselves at 3,000. The queen doesn't seem to be incapable of physically of producing more eggs per month, but they do seem to always stay at somewhere around that 3,000 mark. If they get there, because in captivity they usually stay around like the 2,000, 1,500, something along those lines. Uh, which for me is absolutely amazing because having a Fidoli, which is a, a, an ant species that's relatively cool to watch and to be able to create something that is, you know, small yet very entertaining because it's very easy to build stuff and to create a complex setup or, um, or terrarium for them because they'll, they'll not destroy anything, they are not very... They're not very destructive, so if you have a small colony, they're not very destructive at all, and you can create something very cool, very pretty for them to inhabit in. And that is the project I have with my Phytoinoda colony, but we'll see where that leads, because I've acquired them recently, okay? So, they stay small, they're monogenous, but they're very, very cool. And uh, 3,000 ants is a lot of ants still. Okay, um, they'll have a bunch of mages because in other and in other Fidoli species, if you disturb the nest a lot and if they are under a lot of stress, which in an ant keeper's home they usually are, at least more than in the wild, the production of mages will be affected, and you'll have a lot less mages in your, in your colony than what you'd expect. Like if you found a colony in the wild, the, you'll see more majors per worker than what you'll see in a man-kept, uh, well, a human-kept uh, colony. But Fidoli Noda doesn't seem to be affected in that way, so they'll keep producing majors even if they're stressed or whatever, which is very cool. They are awesome and they're just amazing, they have amazing behavior. They do not really try to escape all that much, and Fidoli are known to try to escape in many different ways. They are very, very peaceful when it comes to your setup. They're not very peaceful when it comes to food, which, in my opinion, is a great, great combination, okay? So they're amazing, and uh, you should keep them. And if you do, you should watch this video to know everything that you need to know about them to keep them well. So any questions, suggestions, add-ons, whatever, whatever, Leave them in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.